Let's say good morning to our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stumblefield. Good morning, Rob. Uh, one of the good things about the campaign season is we'll get to know up close and personal the various candidates. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. A very <laughs> but you're not running. That's a very concise and lucid <laughs> thought. I appreciate that. Also, Maria Lawrence and Maria. Good morning. Great to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. And uh, a, a gift of... Uh, of variety of Girl Scout cookies was bestowed upon us. Not, a lot fewer now. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot less now than it was a couple minutes ago. <laughs> there are actually a lot. I just looked at it. Right? He has went through that like a bunch of boat weevils yeah. on cotton. You, you, you walked out, yeah. we got in. Yeah, yeah. And, and we got some farm fresh eggs as well. You, you know, you don't know what you're going to get yeah. from day to day when you come in here. Uh, but uh, we appreciate all the work. Donuts uh, one day, eggs a second day. Thank you, Joe. Living well. Yeah. At uh, 908, uh, our next guest, and by the way, Senator Joe Manchin, the back half of this hour, will be calling in. We say good morning to former delegate and current candidate for state Senate, John Doyle. Johnny. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see Good to be here. See all three of you. Yeah. Yeah, you're back from Charleston. I am. And from what I saw, a lot of the bills we talked about didn't make it through at the end, and you were lobbying against some of those. I was lobbying against a lot of them, and I was very happy that a whole lot of them didn't pass. Yeah, back up just a second, John. You were down there representing who and what type, what were you lobbying for or against? Okay, uh, I had three clients, uh, West Virginia Free, which is a women's health care organization. Don't, don't uh, pound the table, Mr. Doyle. Oh, I was just tapping it. That, that's, uh, still, that's, the microphone counts it as pounding. All right. I will, I will discipline myself. Uh, West Virginia Free, which is a women's health care organization, uh, very much pro-choice. Uh, West Virginia Citizens Action Group, which focuses on consumer rights and voting rights. Uh, and a group from the Potomac Highlands called West Virginia Clean and Be- Beautiful, which is uh, an environmental and land use uh, uh, focused organization. So those were the issues upon which I lobbied. And between those uh, uh, half dozen issues, uh, there were a lot of things I had to keep track of. Yeah, this, uh, my impression was this uh, this particular session was more cultural than it was uh, in infrastructure, a focus, a cultural fo- uh, focus as opposed to infrastructure. Uh, that is exactly so that right. Means, so that means a lot of the issues you're representing falls on that cultural uh, category. That's right. I spent 90% of my time trying to defeat bills, not to try to pass them. There, there were a, a few bills that uh, organizations I represented wanted passed, but none of them passed. Uh, the so the the of of the the few bills that passed, the one that uh, drives me nuts the most is the one that changed the uh, organization uh, of uh, of public broadcasting. You know, what they they took the uh, authority to appoint the executive director and thereby to make other policy decisions away from the membership of the, the election of, of what was called the educational broadcasting authority and gave all of that all of that power to the secretary of arts culture and history uh and that th- that office was renamed it was the curator of arts culture and history it's now the secretary of arts culture and history and that person, who is at the moment Randall Reed Smith, mm-hmm. w- will make all the decisions. And, of course, uh, that office is appointed by the governor. Uh, and it's interesting, Bill, and I'm, I'm, my, I imagine you've heard this. Uh, a lot of my conservative friends over, over the years have argued against public broadcasting because they say it will automatically become an arm of whoever is in power. Well, guess what? These conservatives officially statutorily made it an arm of whoever is in power that's the the richest irony of the entire session to me there's a lot of irony in this session there was <laughs> that's true and i i am i'm going to start calling randall reed smith uh, who is now the secretary of arts culture and history i'm going to call him the 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 the, the kaiser of culture uh I, I thought about using the word czar, but czar has been overused. Kaiser is very underused. Very underused. And also, in, historically, the Kaisers of Germany exercised their power 
uh, more effectively than most of the czars of Russia have. I mean, when you eliminate Peter the Great and Catherine the Great, all those Russian czars were, were dumb klutzes. There you have it. We appreciate yeah. your, your view of history there, Mr. Doyle. Yeah, John, this particular bill did not receive a lot of publicity. I know. That's the first time I've heard about it. And I agree with you. I think public radio needs to be independent, as yeah. independent as it possibly can be. If it's part of the government wing, it's uh, that's the opposite of being public radio. Exactly. Well, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, hey, hey, oh, go ahead, Bill. No, I was going to say uh, a little bit of behind the scenes. How did it get proposed and slipped through with such little fanfare? Well, uh, it was one of those uh, uh, what's called a fat possum. Uh, the, 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 the phrase came from former House Speaker Clyde C. many years ago. Uh, he said, a fat, fat possum travels at midnight talking about bills that just slipped through the legislature and nobody noticed them. Some people are able to do that. They take advantage of circumstances, particularly the session was so hot and bothered with cultural issues. They didn't notice some things like that. And it, it, it yeah, it, there was no public hearing. Nobody, nobody thought to call for a public hearing on it to let the, the, the public know what was going on. Uh, it was brought up in committee probably two, three minutes, just passed out. Nobody asked very many questions because not many legislators know much about public broadcasting, so they didn't know to ask the questions. Yeah. I'm surprised my good friend John Doyle did not make more of a public issue on this. Because that's not an issue that I was hired to lobby on. During that 60 days, I had a fiduciary responsibility to only pay attention to the issues that my three clients uh, asked me to pay attention to. You're dealing with a hired gun there, Bill. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting paid, and he was getting paid to do a job. That's, that's right. I, you know, I, I don't use the word gun. I, when people would ask me about that, I would just say, hey, I'm just hired help. But you come in this morning, the first time after session, and tell us about a bill that we did not know anything about, that slipped through and is now law. I assume it'll be signed by the governor. Uh, well, he's the one who wanted it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that I could see was was significant ramifications. Yes, and uh, so something's wrong with a system that something like this can be passed without an opportunity for public outcry. It, it happens all the time, Bill. Well, I think sadly, it happens all the time. Republicans feel that public radio is too liberal. So perhaps this was an attempt to try to control what they regard as a strictly liberal, unbalanced message. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a very even-handed uh, view, Rob. I think it's more that Jim Justice doesn't like it when anybody in the media attacks him for anything. And in this case, he thought he could do something about it. And did. And did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John. Here's a nut, but a little bit of the irony. Yes. I guarantee you, if Steve Williams gets elected governor, the, mm -hmm. the, the Democrat who's running, and we still have a big Republican majority in the legislature, they will turn this back around in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be a good thing. Uh, Steve's a good guy. He's got, yeah. a great, he's got a great no, resume. But I, but I mean turning this back around so that it is removed. Mm -hmm. they, they don't let him have the ability to no, appoint I, No, I understood what you meant. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I want to ask you about the Jefferson County situation with the commissioners and how much you paid attention to what happened yesterday. Oh, I paid attention. Yeah, what, what, what were your thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, I did not realize that there were two tracks that, that uh, a prosecutor could go down. Uh, when it came to a, a situation like this where, where a public official uh, clearly does not uh, honor his or her oath of office. I thought the only sanction would be bring them up on charges, have the Supreme Court decide with this three ju justice or three judge panel, excuse me, and then if found guilty, remove from office. I didn't realize there were individual charges you could file. Uh, with each of the transgressions. So, uh, 42, I think. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. like, right? uh -huh. And uh, what I am still trying to discern is where, where, who's behind that? Because the stories talk about the troopers bringing the, going to arrest them. Yeah. Um, so who is the, yeah, who's the, the, 
the person or persons that said, go get him. The I prosecutor. Mean, but, <laughs> but not in Berkeley County. It was a county some th- to the west of us. It was mentioned in the, in the journal, in the was article. Okay. But I, I did not know who it was. Well, it was the special prosecutor. Was okay, Yeah, but it was not in the eastern, not in Berkeley or Jefferson County. Okay. Oh, I thought it was just a decision by Prosecuting Attorney Matt, Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey had made a decision, yes. But that was going... That's the that's three-judge that's panel the piece. Removal, the removal. Yeah. This is yes. something different. Oh, then These the, okay. 42 charges are a different... Yeah. Well, and, see, and, I read the story, and I just I put two yeah. and two together and apparently came up with seven and a half. Okay. And these 42 are criminal charges. Yes. And what Matt Harvey proposed were not criminal. They were just uh, uh, procedural. Yes. Yeah, so office. that's who I was looking at. Who was the person I have behind all no that? No idea. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll get them on here, Rob. Whoever it is. Whoever no, it is. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. They, no one's allowed to talk about anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. When a, when a case is ongoing, nobody in the law can talk about the case. Sure. So, okay. And then afterwards, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Right. There so, you go. It, I want to tell deal. you. I want to tell you about the three best speeches that I saw in this last session of the legislature. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Weld in the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, speaking in favor of the law w- which passed, and this is a, a, one of the good things that happened in my view, uh, which uh, eliminated the, the spousal exception for sexual abuse. Yes. Uh, it was a fantastic speech. Uh, two others on the House floor, both by uh, social conservatives. Uh, uh, Evan Worrell from Huntington. Ryan Weld is from Ohio County. Evan Worrell from Huntington uh, on the bill that reduced unemployment benefits. And uh, Brandon Steele from uh, Raleigh County uh, in support of uh, Delegate Sean Hornbuckle's amendment, Hornbuckle is the minority leader, uh, on the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, School Resource Officers Act. And his speech was telling his fellow conservatives racism is, in fact, uh, systemic. Uh, and I think that was the best one. The other two were tied for second, um, so for whatever for whatever that's worth, that's uh, and, and now I, the, the guns in the classroom uh, teacher teacher carry thing failed. It did fail, and I still I contend, if you're going to do that, they have to have more training than range time. I think they have to have the kind of training police officers have when all of a sudden you're under fire. Yeah, it'd be like SWAT team training. I mean, that's yes. serious stuff because if you're if you're being utilized, there's something really bad happening. That is exactly right, and and it, it, you you never know how an individual human being is going to behave the first time he or she is under fire. Yeah, you made that argument before yeah. based upon your time in Vietnam. That's right. Yeah. 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 It, I'm sorry, go right. That's one of the reasons that after World War II, the U.S. military made uh, wholesale changes in its training for combat. You know, in World War II, clear up through World War II, you had many cases of the first time someone's under fire, they just take off and run. And so the military revised its training, so now that hardly ever happened in Vietnam. Uh, uh, it's it's a, it, it's a very effective training that they've come up with. So the and it, and what it is is you've been under fire in practice so often that uh, let's say Maria, that door over there is your battle station. When it starts, you will immediately grab your rifle, go to your battle station, and start firing without even thinking about it because you've just done it so many times. Yeah. Shifting gears, the Mm -hmm. uh, vaccination bill that's uh, Mm -hmm. now for virtual and uh, or uh, uh, private private schools. Uh, Were you involved at all in that discussion? Uh, I was I was uh, uh, among the people opposed to that. That's right. That's one of the ones I was hired to fight. Uh, It's uh, I'm glad it got toned down from uh, one version where it would have also applied to public schools Uh, and and religious. uh, Yeah. 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 And, And I think. 
Uh, well, still, the religious is still there. I thought it got taken no, it out. Got the taken out. Oh, it did? Oh, it did? It was taken oh. Out. Yes, yes, it's taken out. I was happy the public schools got taken out. That's mm-hmm. great. Thank you. Uh, the uh, but uh, And I think, you know, sometimes when that happens, when you tone down a bill to compromise to get it through, you end up losing the st- some of their supporters lose heart. The steam goes out of some of the people who are backing the bill and say, well, I don't care if it passes now. Yeah, it's a... John, what got left on the table that looks like they might come back at it next year? Um, anything related to economic development. And see, I can I, I, I can sit here with a round table with Bill and, and, and John Hardy and Mike Height and Mike Carl uh, and Mike Hornby and, 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 and argue till the cows come home about what kinds of policies are best for economic development. I would have very different ideas than many of them. But the problem is that most of the decisions in this session of the legislature were made by people who didn't even care about that fight. They were into cultural issues. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, uh, so this debate about, you know, what would be our best tax policy? Uh, how best to go about uh, recruiting, uh, what what to do about stimulating the economy from within. All of these questions were just left by the wayside. And I do think uh, that that's what this election will be about uh, statewide, uh, in the statewide offices and and in legislative races. Uh, You're going to hear a lot of discussion about that. And I hope we'll get some direction from the people about, you know, what direction they want to go. So, John, best thing that happened, worst thing that happened, in your opinion, this uh, session. Worst thing that happened was when you tried to call us that one day from the hallway <laughs> in the Capitol, and you go ahead and fill in the best thing, John. <laughs> well, that wasn't the worst, worst thing, right? It uh, might have been. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was the worst thing, personally. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I mean, it, uh, Maria, it was <laughs> terrible radio. I could tell from my end on my cell phone. It was just awful. Um I think uh, the best thing that happened w- was dual. Uh, the defeat of the so-called Baby Olivia Bill and the defeat of the so-called Women's Bill of Rights, which is really a let's pick on trans people bill. That, that's the, those are the best thing. Uh, the worst thing, if it wasn't for that phone call, it was probably the passage of that uh, public broadcasting bill to me. Yeah. John, that's a threat to democracy. It really is. I was going to say, and and you have been there so many sessions, um, and you know we we watch bills um, often, but you just don't know until the last minute what's going to slip in and what's going to be amended and and how that all all that all that works. I mean, it's been a lot of years since I was a public information intern but i do remember jay rockefeller was was governor yikes it was a lot of years ago but um (laughs) you know just that session and just looking and it's like 10 to 12 and you're like what was that where'd that come from you know dead giveaway about the poor morale of almost everybody at the end is that the Senate shut down 20, 20 minutes to midnight. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's turning the clock back or anything, hey, right? J- John, well, you can't do that anymore. Okay. Yeah. You okay. were there when there was a supermajority for Democrats, mm-hmm. and you observed this session as a supermajority of Republicans. Mm-hmm. Do you see any eerily similar things that the Republicans are doing that ultimately brought down the Democratic supermajority? Oh, yeah. Uh, not listening to the public. That, that's the biggest thing. Uh, and, and with the Democrats, uh, I, 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 and I, my bias may be showing here. I'll acknowledge that. But I think there's more. I understand it with the Democrats more because they'd been in for 80 years straight. I mean, they, the Democrats had really gotten stale. Uh, this is a little bit early. Uh, for the Republican supermajority to get stale, but they're starting to get stale too. John, uh, would we be would we be better served by having every other session just for uh, uh, for the smaller items and leaving the, and do the budget on the intervening session? Uh, I don't 
No, I don't think so. We, we, years ago, we had that. Uh, up until about 1962, I think it was, we had a 60 calendar day session in the odd numbered year, right after the election, and then a 30 day session in the even numbered year that, that you, you could only take up things relating to the budget. And what happened is a whole lot of, of, of major policy issues would, would go simmering in, in, a, in a covered pot. Uh, I actually think that part of the problem is that we don't have enough time in session. Too many of these things don't. I mean, let's face it. The legislature is supposed to be a deliberative body. We're supposed to think about things and talk with, as we, when I was in, think about things, talk with each other about them, sound out the public, all that kind of stuff. There isn't time for that now. Uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, are there any, any of a number of ways you can do it? Uh, uh, what I would say is we, I, I think we should have more time in regular schedule session in return for a much tighter limit on the number and length of special sessions. We'd end up being inside. We, again, you know, I was in the legislature so long, I'm looking at it as an insider. The legislature would be in, in session about the same amount of time but both the members and the public would know when it was going to be. It would be uh, m much more transparent. Uh, people, the legislators and the public would be able to plan their schedules uh, in terms of being there. Uh, I, I just think we need, Maryland has a 90 day session every year. I think they've only had something like about a half a dozen special sessions in the last 30 years. We have two or three every year. We're going to have one in May. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I, I, it's I just, just a think, given. Yeah, I think there's a better way to run this railroad. I don't know yet exactly what it is, but I think there's got to be a better way. And and I'm I've started to think about it, how, how you would change it. So I think that I've just what I've just said is the basic concept, but in specific, how many days, when they are, that sort of stuff. I haven't you know gotten that far yet. John, sixty seconds. Wrap up the last sixty days. Oh, a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> That's less than 60 seconds, John. Good for you. Uh, help yourself to a cookie and some eggs on the way out. Why, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. It's always fun being here. Good to have you, sir.